there's going to be a rude awakening, I think, for quite a lot of boomers, if no one else, but also quite a lot of society who hasn't noticed how fast things have changed in regards to demographics, because local elections happen in the UK. Most boring, mundane topic, who cares? Mm. But one of the things that was amazing, and you covered it yesterday, <clears throat> is that a lot of people were elected Councillor of Palestine, and these folks sort of stole the spotlight, and everyone realized, hang on a tick. I don't think that particular city or town is, is that English anymore, <laughs> if all of their councillors are all not campaigning on the bins, but instead campaigning on Palestine and Palestine alone, like some kind of Irish revolutionary fighting for Ireland. So, yeah. Uh, I saw in response to a lot of people talking about this. Um, there should be... No, never mind. There, we'll start with this advert here, which is that there's also jobs at lotuses.com if you'd like to apply. This is a production manager role, which is there if you go to the website and then scroll down to careers. So do go and take a look. But otherwise, we shall begin because there was a position I saw a lot of people taking, which is the Antonin Scalia, for example. He is a paragon of, well, integration, whereas then those counselors, well, over here, are not a paragon of integration. Because they're shouting Allahu Akbar, and Antonin Scalia was a man who, well, basically became part of the Anglo Saxon world. Now, for people who don't know, Supreme Court Justice, but his background is sort of perfect for this argument. So, his father was off the boat Italian, he just turned up in the US and did his thing, and his mother was the daughter of Italian immigrants. A massive Italian background, obviously, Sicilian. He would have been a Sicilian peasant if he was born in Italy, but instead he was born in the US under those circumstances. I don't know if that makes him first or second generation immigrant. Exactly. But if he was born in the US, then second. Yeah. Makes him second. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's him. That's where he's born, right? And they say, uh, I think they say here, he was born in Trenton, New Jersey. They can trace him back to the old country. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. Um, Whacked. <laughs> but this being, uh, I saw a quote tweet put about this where someone said, uh, the triumph of American multiculturalism, Scalia, who without America would have been a Sicilian peasant, trumpets the wonders of the Anglo-Saxon culture, whereas uh, British multiculturalism is a Pakistani subsidized to scream about Palestine. <laughs> Which, I mean, was demonstrably the case over the weekend. And for people who don't know what we're talking about with Scalia, the reason that people bring him up is because even though his Italian roots, he's not just some guy who was born in America. He obviously did wildly successful as Supreme Court Justice, but has spoken about this issue specifically. So this was a, a video or a debate in 2006. What's funny is that they're having the same debate we are. It's just things weren't changing as rapidly. It's always the same. So let's, uh, let's enjoy a bit of this, shall we? In which Antonin Scalia talks about the Anglo-Saxon world. Diversity alone is, is, is not what makes a great nation. I mean, uh, diversity alone makes uh, uh, some of the tribal societies of the world that, uh, uh, that never quite make it, uh, such as some of the uh, places in the Middle East where we're trying to... Uh, uh, establish na nationhood. Um, as I said earlier, it's, it's part of our tradition that everybody can be an American, but there has been a common, uh, a, a, a common culture. Yeah, you what, don't have to belong to it, but there has been that. And what the, is it? The what is it? What is it? Well, okay, you, you want to know what it is, number yeah. one? Okay. Is there a bond? Is there a common culture? I think, let, let me tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> My junior year college, I studied in Switzerland, and I used to get really annoyed when the, uh, the French-Swiss professors I had would refer constantly to les pays anglo-sacs, the Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, re meaning England, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, okay, Canada. And I said, you know, hey, my name is Scalia. And I'm as American as anybody. Look at this face. Is this an Anglo-Saxon face? Bada boom, bada bing. Eh. <laughs> I had never been in England, but at the end of my year, I went to England, and I felt at home. There is, there is no doubt that American culture, American common culture, which nobody has to belong to, originates with English culture. And that includes Shakespeare, it includes nursery rhymes that we all know and that we use as examples. That's our common culture. And I think the framers recognized that. Uh, and uh, diversity is fine, but diversity does not make a nation. And diversity at the expense of... Look at his face. Oh my God. Like, the rest of that debate, I do encourage people to go and watch because it's hilarious how little 
the other people on the panel seem to understand what he just said. When looking at it, I think that's it's pretty self explanatory. One of them there was Very Podesta, fun. right? <clears throat> and they, I've recognized Podesta, I think. I believe so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, mm. carry on. But the, the point being made there, obviously, is that, okay, well, before we go forward, the idea of comparing the United States' version of multiculturalism to the British version of multiculturalism, I hate that word. Mm. But it's, it's just mad. I mean, at the start, England has one culture, it's English. That's the, that's the founding of the state, that's the whole point. Sure, there's a, a kingdom on top of that, which unifies multiple countries, but the country of England. Yeah, it's Europe. We're, we're basically ethno states. We're based on the ethnic groups there, and the ethnic groups are made up of the cultural groups. So the idea that we have multiculturalism is no, no. With, with this is a modern thing that has been imported on mass, and then you end up with different cultures, and that's a multi of cultures. There's no mixing there. Whereas the U.S. has its own circumstance, which is yes, it's a new world country, so it had waves of immigration. But Scalia, obviously recognizing the truth, which seems to be so devoid of understanding in the United States, which is that you're an Anglo-Saxon country. You always have been. The founders knew this. I mean, that's why they were so racist. It was kind of funny. It wasn't just uh, only white immigrants. It was white immigrants from certain areas, because have you seen Europe? And like that's, that's the reason you had those original writings, is because well, the Anglo-Saxons, they wanted to value an Anglo-Saxon nation and wanted to reduce immigration to be the Anglo-Saxon parts if they could help it. And then you have people interpreting that in the modern day as like, oh, they just like white people. It's like, have you seen the Irish? They're quite white, <laughs> but, but there's a reason we kicked them out of the white race. It's because we were talking about certain types we wanted over here. And it wasn't just about pure skin tone. It was about more than that. And from ever more, the United States has been an Anglo-Saxon country, like 80 to 90% of the times. And at which case... That's what it is. And now it's massively changing in the modern era for very similar reasons. It's that the people in charge have decided we need mass immigration from literally, I don't know, Kazakhstan. Because question marks? Just anyone and everyone, apparently, with no concern about how that's going to work out. And Scalia being a guy from an Italian background, making the argument, well, you know, you will become part of it, right? Because to go and check out, I mean, this is a graph I saw just before we started. So this is a complete history of racial and ethnic demographics of the United States population. This is on Wikipedia, if you want to go and find it. And I've introduced this red line here, because that's the year Anthony Scalia was born. And Anthony Scalia's position, as he goes on in that debate, is that he thinks that the huge increasing amount of immigration when he's talking around 2006 isn't that big of a problem, because these people will become like the primary group, as his family did in this period. And I'm sorry... A lot has changed between these periods before and this period now. And as you can see, this cuts off at about, what, 2013? Something like that, maybe 2015? So the uh, graph is going to be even more extreme as things change. And at which point is there actually a group to integrate into, mm. is the question on my mind. Because, again, Anthony Scalia's position is sort of here. This is back where he lived, in which there was a primary group which you could integrate into. But if there's not one anymore, well, there's going to be a new one, isn't there? Because getting to the United Kingdom... Of course, this is what I was talking about with um, average local man. Raise the voice of Palestine! Your new councillor, sir. Like, legit speechless at some of this. I could not believe it. <clears throat> what do you even say exactly? Because, I mean, a fair few people were a bit miffed when they saw this, because the guy as well, obviously, being an average Muslim, was celebrating uh, the... October 7 attacks there. Where he's like, yes, white supremacist European settler colonialism <clears throat> must be ended. That was on the day. So that was before Israel responded. That's average Leeds man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Local Leeds average man. northerner. Oh, you might wonder who, 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 who the F is, this Leeds man. Well, I mean, you can go and check out. The Green Party has a big old uh, thing on Moth and Alley over here. Uh, they say in here to advertise him to you. Aside from campaigning on local issues, he's a local accountant by profession and a qualified mufti. He has lived in Gipton on Hare Hills for more than 20 years, and in that time, he's always been involved in community work, whether that's volunteering at the local mosque, teaching children Arabic, campaigning to get more liquor licenses repealed, yeah. or campaigning against drugs dealers in the area. I can't help but notice, but three of those are very, very Islamic. Yeah, there's only one good thing for the community, though, He's like, quite I'm frankly. <laughs> the Green Party like, <laughs> are advertising this candidate. I'm not joking, it's in here. Where they're just like, yes, he, he's getting rid of alcohol licenses, teaching Arabic and working in the mosque. Again, classic values of an Englishman from Leeds. Yeah. He from rivets at sea. 
<laughs> but the, the the big kicker in there for me is that he's lived there for 20 years. Just over, I think. Mm. Right? Yeah, no intention. Just, just more. Just, no just intention. More than 20 years. Just just a little bit more. Mm. 20, 20 years in one month. I like, I like that part there where he says he said, having lived in an overcrowded back-to-back, -back, I have experience of how poor quality housing can affect the lives of ordinary people. So what's his stance on immigration then? Well, I suppose we'll find out. <laughs> but the big difference here being that Scalia grew up in a world, or at least in the United States, that was very different from the modern day. The, the primary group there being, they, they use white in the American census, but the reality is, of course, you're going to have some groups that are Italians or whatever else, but mm. the common culture, as he points out, being Anglo-Saxon. But when we get to the United Kingdom, and especially this chap, he's been living in this particular area of Leeds for 20 years. And um, well, what does he do, apart from campaigning in well, Arabic? Well, he campaigns in Bangladesh, as you can see. Average average campaigner, campaigning in foreign. I found this on his campaign page. So this is how he goes about with his Palestine hat, his friends with Palestine shirts. You say he's originally from Bangladesh, sorry? That's his uh, ethnic group, yeah. That's funny, isn't it? Because Bangladesh is nowhere near the Levant. I think they're probably the furthest Muslim group uh, away, except Indonesia, maybe. Yeah, maybe the Indonesia, Malaysia type ones. Yeah, but it's like... So anyway, I just wanted to make that point. Well, from the river to the sea. Uh, although the other people... The river Ganges. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the river Ganges to the Mediterranean Sea, uh, this guy not only campaigns with these fine fellows, he also campaigns with these ladies. One you can see there with the Love is Love mm. logo, which um, this, this segment is not about the madness that is the Green Party, but these two groups of people are apparently campaigning on the same day with each other. Look at that dude. <clears throat> just take a moment to look, to look at him. Some physiognomy right there. What is that? <laughs> you leave the slender man alone. <laughs> anyway, but the, the local man, I decided to check him out because it, it, I can't change what's happened to Leeds, but what I can do is go and have a look and see what's happened. And as you can see here, I suppose I'll play with the audio. He's a, he runs his own YouTube channel about gardening. He's got other interests other than Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So I've got low. Never mind. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> I was wrong about that. <laughs> Just how he enjoys gardening. Um, so what happened to the UK? Why why is it like that? Why why have I done all of this? Because that point about the US is something. But getting to where he lives, well, I want to check that out in the ONS graph. Have you seen the ONS map? I've seen. I have. It's yeah, worrying. Have I been, think it is very very worrying. Quite frankly, if you ever want to know enclaves, about, yeah, if you ever want to know about an area, sincerely, I'm just saying, mm. download the graph because as you can see here, we're screwed out. Um, there's Leeds. Uh, this is the specific area where he ran for councillor. And I've selected the uh, English ethnic group on the census. And as you can see, it goes as low as what? That's 3%, uh, 3.8, 7, these neighborhoods here. Yeah, that's, no. that's, that's the way he's campaigning. If he's lived there for 20 years, I'm going to have a guess it's been sort of like this for about that 20 years. And this is where I get to the point of, I'm not sure you can even really be mad. I mean, you can be mad at the, the politicians for mass immigration, don't get me wrong, but it's... What is anyone expecting a man growing up in that area like this for the past 20 years to come out as? Are we really expecting a, a top hat wearing aristocratic Englishman? I mean, something along that trajectory, though. <laughs> right, something. Give us something. Well, you, it doesn't look like he is interested in, in, in it at all, yeah. in the, the process of integration, right? Um, what is integration? I don't know the man. I don't know the man. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, people talk about integration, and that people were proposing this uh, difference between Scalia and uh, Mr. Ali as differences in the integration policy and the fact that the U.S. has succeeded and the U.K. has failed. Mm. It's like, what in the, the dude can only integrate into being Bangladeshi. All his neighbors are Bangladeshi. For, like, a mile radius, they're all Bangladeshi. Yeah, that's quantity, isn't it? It's... But still, if and when you become elected... Maybe don't make the first thing you do is to scream at our Rekba. But what if you maybe that? But what if all your constituents want you to do that? Mm, yeah, that's. No, just... I know your point you're making. I... No, I'd have some have some conviction of, of your own your own sort of mental fortitude. Surely, <laughs> I mean, I, under I understand. Like the argument is that he has his constituencies. But... I get what you mean. He would have been brought up in a milieu where it wasn't encouraged to become fully well maybe he I, you know i don't know the guy's mind or what's in his soul but he obviously doesn't want to does he well he no, doesn't want to i i'm not big on mass immigration i'm sure people know but I, i'm trying to take it as like just a what is situation rather than give my opinion because you look at that this is the net effect is you end up with enclaves in which well just no english people live anymore 
In which case, why would you ever expect an Englishman to come out of an environment where there is no English culture? I mean, why would you expect hordes of Englishmen just to appear out of the ether in Bangladesh? Yeah. It just wouldn't make sense. Uh, the, the Tibetans, um, they've, they've all started having tea and biscuits and for no reason. It's not going to happen. Everyone around them is Tibetan. The whole culture is Tibetan. Well, maybe with the Chinese replacing them. Whole other <laughs> issue. But the, you get my point. It's just not magically going to appear. You know, just just bits of English culture in the the steppes of Mongolia or the the deeps of the Amazon jungle. We find an uncontacted tribe, and they're all wearing red coats. Is that not a <laughs> is that not a condemnation of mass immigration's intent? So the people come into the countries, their their intent, no matter where it is. You know, you'd come to a country because you want to be in that country and therefore integrate with that culture. Whereas this, surely that's a, you know, pretty big red mark against people's intent as they arrive in the country because they're like, well, I'm here. I don't, I don't, I'm not here because I want to be part of British culture. I'm here because I can, I can, you know, have my own sort of enclave as opposed to, you know, sort of blend into the, the Britishness of the surroundings because well, there isn't any in fairness there, but. Well, that's my thing. It's like, no matter what the intent of the immigrant, I mean, literally, if you can't find English people for love nor money, um, you, you won't be able to figure out what they do and then integrate into them. You will just find whatever's around you, which is non-English. So then you're saying the entire concept of integration is at its fundamental level flawed. There would never be, because you get British people that go and live in Spain or whatever, and then they just they just make like an English pub there like a little and, England, and make a little enclave of English people somewhere in Spain. I mean, not always. I think, I think Northwest so. European cultures do sometimes go to other places in the world and they do go native in inverted mm. commas. They do integrate. But it's a question but of it's numbers. it's rare, isn't it? It's a question of numbers, I think, fundamentally. Like, if you go to an area where everyone is English and eating English breakfast, of course, you're just going to eat English breakfast. What else are you doing? But if you go somewhere like Northern Sweden, everyone's speaking Swedish mm. and they've stopped saying your because it's so cold and go... That's how they say yes. <laughs> you're going to start going, you're going to fit in. But if everyone's English, you're not going to. And of course, it's the same in the reverse. It's pure numbers. I mean, of course, you can integrate to a place over time if everyone around you is a certain way and you therefore slowly change to their way. But if everyone around you is a certain way Bangladeshi, mm. you're going to become Bangladeshi. It doesn't matter that you're living in Leeds or little London over there, I just noticed, which is also 1.8%. Um, oh, I guess so. But, no, but that's accurate. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's pretty accurate, I think, to little London. But that, <laughs> right, yeah. That's what's happened. I mean, it's that area of land, this place of land here has just been ethnically cleaned. It is no longer one that had, uh, well, had an English group at one point, but now it doesn't. It's just, just gone and it's going at a faster and faster pace. Because, I mean, you can see this in real time. Like, this is the same ward that this guy's won in. You can see the elections for councillor. They used to have names like Alan Taylor, for example, or Roger Harrington. And now the three candidates that won were Sola Amith, Mothin Ali, and Ashka Ali. There's no diversity. There's no. no... This is the thing about the idea that the British integration policy, or multiculturalism as people call it, has failed. There wasn't one. There was no policy for integration because they can't be. You literally can't integrate into English culture if you can't find any English people. Mm. It's just a factual reality. It's not after the bay. It's just, just that's how life is. I mean, why, again, why would you expect, I don't know, random Somalis? to come out of, uh, I don't know, North Korea. It's like, well, they don't have inter integration with Somali culture at all, so why would they become that? It's just a, a madness, nothing else. I mean, you could actually call this Bangladeshi colonial settlerism, but a whole other question. But getting back to Scalia, the, the success of the United States, the argument made there, well, this is what I mean by the rude awakening. Cause, I mean, people are aware this is the UK, this is how things have gone for these places. Well, the US has got the same problem. I mean, this is the specific area that Scalia grew up in. In 1936, he was born. And he was born in this area of New Jersey. And as you can see, um, now, if you look at the uh, rates, and US does their census a lot differently, but they say 9% of this area is classified as white, 42% as black or African-American. They lump the two together. And then the other major group being Hispanics, uh, 45%. So the, uh, the white population there just doesn't exist. And it doesn't always this way either. Scalia didn't grow up in an area mostly Hispanic and African Americans. Mm. It, just, it would be madness to say that that's where he grew up because funnily enough, that's not how he ended up integrating into being an Anglo-Saxon in his mind. Because if you go to well, just some papers about this, so this is Trenton, New Jersey, looked at through demographics through the years they mention in here. 
1940, so when Scalia would have been four years old, the census identified the black community as 7.5% of Trenton. Jesus. It's gone from 7% to 45. That's a huge difference, isn't it? Forget yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but they say the white population, so again, they are a bit broader because it's American census, they use the term white, was 97% white at the beginning of the first Great Migration. So that's 1910. Wow. It was 97%, so now it's 9%. That's a, a century. It's just gone. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, when Scalia was growing up, yeah, it was, it was more like you know, 60, 70, 80% white, which of course there are going to be some Italians and then a lot of Americans are Anglo-Saxon stock. But how do you think the guy ended up figuring out that he lives in an Anglo-Saxon world? Well, he's being taught Anglo-Saxon nursery rhymes, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. That's the common culture of the United States. I can't visually explain this massive change. I think any better than something else that blew up recently, which may fascinate you. This is a video. Caption is, this video looks like it was filmed on another planet. And as you can see, there's a crowd here of uh, white women who are all very excited. But then the camera angle changes in a minute, and, and you'll notice something a bit strange about what we're looking at. It's not your, not your typical music festival. You notice that flag in the background there? Can you make out what it is yet? <laughs> it's the Confederate flag. The <laughs> fact that... <laughs> Let's all just get rid of the screaming. And instead, we'll cut around. Jeez. This is uh, California. <laughs> this is California in the 70s. This is Oakland, California, right next to San Francisco. Wow. Which you can see massive Confederate flag as the, uh, the backdrop for this show. As you can see, the ladies Madness. there. Madness. Well, one thing I'll say on that is it wasn't until fairly recently that it, that was a problem. Mm. Or like nowadays, to even mention or talk about the Nazis is problematic. Do you remember when we did a bit about how um, Candice Owens mentioned Hitler mm. and that, that was a problem? Even in the 70s, you could take a look at the original film, The Producers, for example. You could take the mickey out of Nazis. You could dress up as Nazis yeah, yeah. to take the mickey out of them and there was no problem. You could have a, a Confederate flag. No one really batted an eyelid. Mm. They're not trying to bring back the Confederacy. Yeah. Right? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm trying to play the Hypersensitivity. Yeah, right. We're now just in a world of a... hypersensitivity rather than they were doing something wrong then. It's an of ero... course they weren't doing anything wrong. It's an erosion of your past and your history. Right, yeah. That's it's what right. I think. I also want to show here, they've got the uh, uh, memorial of, I don't know what the word is, but for the Mount Rushmore monument there. Mm. And then American flags. And then the Confederate one, and obviously the, I think the Betsy Ross or whatever. The, but they, they've got a, a, a complete tapestry of American culture, which as an outsider looking in, it's like, oh, God, that's America. Mm. Like uh, you easily identify it as such. And the people living in the same area were all reminiscing or, or exploring this. As you see, there's 1.7 million views on that tweet alone, never mind the original, in which people are like, good God, that's different. And it's people <laughs> who live there. Because if you go and look at the demographics, this is the same place. So this is uh, Oakland. As you can see, in the 70s, it was like this, and now it has changed tremendously. And obviously, back in the days of the 40s, it was a completely different ballgame. And that's what I mean by a lot of the boomers. So Scalia, for example, I think he's not dead. He's that old. I'm not sure, actually. Is he, did he die? Yeah, he's dead. Mm -hmm. But people of that sort of generation who grew up in the, the 50s, 60s, or whatever, they seem to think that things are the same, and it's just so different, it's sort of ignorant. Yeah. A level of ignorance of thinking you can still use landline telephones to call people. It's it's just a completely different world. And as a result, <laughs> you will not get the same results that you once did. And that's what I mean by a rude awakening. I mean, I'll just end this off with uh, some other people making this point. So there's a guy here saying, it's a sign of how far we've fallen that the place you are seeing with American flags everywhere now passes for being right wing. Whereas <laughs> this is what it was just a few years ago. People used to fly the Confederate flag. And it wasn't a symbol of obviously hating black people. It was a symbol of, you know, this is our past. Being a big Dukes of Hazard fan. Mm. Yeah. But even then, like, why do the Dukes of Hazard have it? Yeah. Heritage. And the idea that, no, it's not hate, it's heritage, this line, I find so mad because I've brought up this example before. If you go to St. Petersburg right now in Russia, you will see this. These are three massive flags that have been put up. As you can see, Russian Federation in the background, Soviet Union, and then the Imperial flag of the Russian Empire. And people are just at peace. Like yeah. You can argue about Russian culture in the modern day, whatever, but people are not delusionally sensitive to, mm -hmm. oh my God, you put up the wrong flag. Instead, everyone just is like, yeah, that's our past. And I feel that that's the way the Americans used to live. And um, 
those demographic changes are so large that I don't think you actually have a common thread at the end of all that if it continues. At which point, how will you even be able to remember your past if it's not really relevant? If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as Lads Hour, this episode on the Fallout universe. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.